We've already looked at muscle and nerve uh, as they appear when they're isolated and the individual tissues are um, sectioned and put on a slide. But really the value in being able to identify muscle and nerve is in being able to identify muscle and nerve in the context of the other tissues in which they uh, are found. And this is a slide, perhaps not this exact one, but a slide with which you should be familiar because this is another section through lip. So we have an epithelial surface here and you should revise what epithelium you can see here by looking at it. And we have an epithelial surface here and again you can revise what that epithelium is by going up in magnification and taking a look at it. Beneath the epithelium on both surfaces, so here and here is some connective tissue. In fact there are a couple of types of connective tissue and again you can increase the magnification and look and see and ensure that you can identify the different types of uh, connective tissue which you can see beneath both of these epithelia. The bulk of the core of the lip that we can see here is actually made up at least in this section with uh, muscle. And the muscle which is in here is principally skeletal muscle and interspersed among the skeletal muscle we'll see some blood vessels and although we can't make them out at this magnification we'll also see some uh, nerve. The muscle is sort of woven at uh, almost right angles um, uh, individual fibers or groupings of fibers woven at right angles to one another. So there are regions where we'll see muscle that's cut broadly in longitudinal section and other places where we'll see skeletal muscle cut in cross section. So if we increase the magnification uh, a little bit and we look in this uh, region that we're looking at just here, uh, first of all hopefully you should be able to identify even at this magnification that what you're looking at here is skeletal muscle cut in uh, cross section and here fortunately uh, is a little bit of skeletal muscle cut in longitudinal section. And we look at these in a bit more detail in just a moment. Uh, one thing that I would like you to notice also, and perhaps you will or won't have uh, grasped this straight away, but here is a piece of peripheral nerve that's been cut in cross section. Here's another piece of peripheral nerve, an oblique section, and another piece of peripheral nerve. And there are also present some blood vessels we can see here. These are quite small arterioles with associated nerve on the slide as well. So I'm going to increase in magnification just a little bit. And first let's take a look over here uh, in this region here where we can see um, skeletal muscle cut in what is essentially longitudinal uh, section. So the first thing to notice is that these long uh, fibers we can see here lie essentially parallel to one another. And if we had to say where the nuclei are broadly we would say the nuclei are towards the periphery of the cell. We can go to the maximal magnification uh, possible here and we can look and it should be fairly evident to you, although not as perfect as we might see on a piece of muscle that's been specially prepared uh, by itself on a slide, but here we can see the cross striations which are characteristic of skeletal muscle cut in longitudinal section. Beside it we have skeletal muscle cut in cross section and here again we can see end on profiles of the individual myofibers and the myofibrils contained within the myofibers when cut in cross section or in slight oblique section give this punctate or spotty appearance to each of the individual myofibers and where cell nuclei are present we can see that these nuclei tend to be, here's a very good example here, tend to be pushed completely toward the periphery of the cell. At this uh, high magnification view, it might also be worth our while taking a look at that small uh, cluster of vessels and the little piece of nerve which I had uh, spoken about earlier, just here. So we'll reduce the magnification a little to get it all on the screen at one time. So let's take a look now and revise here, skeletal muscle cut in longitudinal section, here, skeletal muscle cut in cross section. Here we have um, a little branch point of a small blood vessel, specifically an arteriole, and you can see a lumen and a lumen, and here where it's cut nicely in cross section, a lumen, we can see the nuclei of one, at least two endothelial cells, and then there's just one layer of smooth muscle in the tunica media of the wall here, so here it is, and so this is a little arteriole, and then accompanying this cluster, uh, branched cluster of arterioles here is a venule, this structure here, and we can see endothelial cell, endothelial cell, endothelial cell, no real tunica media here because venules at this diameter of lumen have almost no wall structure whatsoever. 
And then finally, accompanying this arteriole and venule is a piece of nerve, here cut an oblique section, and here cut broadly in longitudinal section. And in fact, if we zoomed up in magnification, we might in fact be able to identify a node of Ranvier here. And of course, the cell nuclei, which we can see here, are predominantly cell nuclei that belong to Schwann cells, which myelinate this peripheral nerve. So this is a section of tongue, and on it we can see skeletal muscle, in cross-section, skeletal muscle in longitudinal section. We can see blood vessels, and the sp specifically the smooth muscle that forms the wall of the blood vessels, and we can see peripheral nerve. If you find it difficult to find uh, small vessels like this, you can look for, as we will here, look for larger vessels, and the larger accompanying uh, bundles of nerve. Here we have an obliquely sectioned uh, arteriole, um, or ar sorry, artery, um, oblique because it's actually going through a couple of planes. At this point here, we can see the circumferentially wrapping uh, smooth muscle cells here, uh, and then they appear uh, cut and cross section out at the margins like this. We can see longitudinal uh, skeletal muscle here, and we can see skeletal muscle in cross section here. And then, importantly, this great big wavy bundle of peripheral nerve fiber that accompanies this uh, arteriole, uh, or sorry, artery here. And if we were to look around, uh, I don't see it just now, but if we were to look around, we would probably find a, uh, or should find, a vein that would accompany this particular arteriole. So you should look around on any of the tongue slides to which you have access and ensure that you can identify skeletal muscle and smooth muscle in the walls of the vasculature and peripheral nerve. Here's another uh, tissue section where we can uh, take a look at uh, muscle and nerve in the context of the uh, normal tissue and organ structures in which they're found. And what I'm looking at here is a section of esophagus. And we've actually looked at esophagus before when we were looking at uh, epithelium, so this should be some revision for you. Here's the lumen of the esophagus. Here's the mucosa, the epithelium that lines the uh, esophagus. And you can look at this epithelium uh, yourself and um, revise epithelium by looking at the epithelium here. We have some connective tissue and some smooth muscle that underlies the epithelium here, which we'll look at in a moment. Then we have a region of connective tissue, which we'll also see uh, in a moment. And this region of connective tissue separates the um, mucosal surface and the little band of smooth muscle from the underlying uh, thick muscular wall of the esophagus. The muscular wall of the esophagus in the upper third of the esophagus is made of skeletal striated muscle. In the lower third of the esophagus is made only of smooth muscle. But in the middle third of the esophagus, as here, is made of a mixture of skeletal muscle and striated muscle. And we'll take a look at both of those uh, in just a second. So here we increase in magnification a little bit. Here's the epithelium about which I spoke. Here's the connective tissue that just underlies the epithelium, called the lamina propria. And here is a bundle, or a, a um, strip, of uh, smooth muscle that underlies the uh, lamina propria. The smooth muscle here, depending on orientation, will be cut either in longitudinal or in cross-section. As we look at this region here, this is um, typical of the appearance of smooth muscle cut in uh, cross-section. There's a small arteriole here, and you can look around in the connective tissue and you should be able to see uh, plenty of small blood vessels. Here is another arteriole, endothelial cell nucleus, endothelial cell nucleus, and one layer of smooth muscle. Uh, and you can also revise connective tissue by looking at the dense irregular connective tissue which you find as indicated here. There's a small capillary passing through it. But really our attention should be focused on this region here which is the muscle layer of the uh, esophagus or actually there's several muscle layers here. And the first thing you might notice is that quite a bit of the muscle as we can see in this region here and perhaps in this region here looks fairly typical of smooth muscle cut in longitudinal section. Whereas in other places, the muscle is quite distinctly uh, different. Uh, so let's take a look first at the uh, smooth muscle cut in longitudinal uh, section as we increase in magnification a little bit. So here it is, uh, very classic smooth muscle cut in longitudinal uh, section, which would mean it's circumferentially oriented with respect to the axis of the esophagus. But in fact, even without going to the very top magnification, what we can see here somewhat, and indeed here, is muscle that doesn't appear like the uh, smooth muscle, and at least here has 
distinct uh, cross striations. Let's look at this uh, region here, for example. Here's a long piece. You'll notice that there aren't very many nuclei distributed through this region here. And what nuclei there are seem to be pushed toward the periphery of what looks like a skeletal muscle myofiber here and here. So let's go to the top magnification. And now, looking at that um, muscle tissue which we see here, we see distinct cross striations or AI banding. And we can contrast that with the smooth muscle which is located here in which there is absolutely no cross striations uh, apparent. Here we see nuclei which are pushed toward the periphery of this myofiber, perhaps these ones to the periphery of this myofiber, and we can contrast that with smooth muscle and longitudinal section which we see here in which clearly these nuclei <coughs> are not pushed to the periphery of any particular uh, structure. And finally, if we go to the outermost part of the esophagus here, which is actually an additional layer of, uh, of muscle, and we can increase the magnification on this. And again, here what we see is um, smooth muscle cut in cross-section, quite clearly um, smooth muscle uh, in the area which I'm indicating here. But if we compare it with the appearance of here, 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 and here, and again, let's go up in magnification, what we're looking at here and here is the classic punctate end-on appearance of skeletal muscle myofibers cut in cross-section with their characteristic periphery located uh, nuclei. Finally, there's one other thing that's worth looking at uh, on this particular slide. You can look for um, bundles of peripheral nerve in this connective tissue here all the way around the circumference of the esophagus. But there's actually one very large bundle of uh, peripheral nerve. In fact, this is a named nerve called the vagus nerve, and it's located in the outermost connective tissue coat of the uh, esophagus. And as we increase in magnification and take it back just a little bit, we can see here's the classic encapsulated looking cross-sectional view of our peripheral nerve. Here's a small branch of it uh, just here. We can see the classic appearance of peripheral nerve cut in cross-section, which at times can look quite similar, in fact, to smooth muscle cut in cross-section. Here we see oblique section verging on longitudinal uh, section. So this is a piece of peripheral nerve. Here's the epineurium. Uh, the nerve separates back a little from the epineurium, which surrounds the nerve. And then, as we always find with nerves, there are some blood vessels both accompanying it. And in fact, in, the, in this case, we see two small blood vessels here. Uh, running down the center of the nerve, but then close by we see a small, uh, probably a venule uh, here and a little arteriole here. This may in fact be a lymphatic um, vessel here. Uh, here's again another small venule. So this is an excellent slide for revising your understanding of skeletal muscle, revising your understanding of smooth muscle, and also seeing vascular um, elements, blood vessels, and nerve in the context of surrounding tissues.